99 percent of the people who don't believe in astrology they are uh, the followers of the newspaper astrology in newspaper you get the prediction for the whole year or for the whole month based on just your sun sign or sometimes the moon sign now the very reason that these people don't believe in it is the is the first principle of probability okay you have 12 signs and the predictions have been divided into 12 so whatever they read against their uh, prediction against their moon sign or sun sign they believe that this is going to happen to one twelfth of the people in this world and that's the core reason why they believe they, they have the reason to disbelieve in the science. Now let me tell you one thing. Astrology is a is an experiential science. You have to experience it. The only people who have experienced it, they tend to believe in it. Others who just follow the newspaper astrology, they won't believe in it. Now the whole universe is made up of five basic elements. That is the fire element, the earth, the vayu, akash, and anjal. That is water. Okay. So is your body. Whatever is there in the Brahman, it is there in the pind. Pind is you, and Brahman is the whole universe. So your body itself is made of these five elements. And you must have heard about a word called Panchanga. Panchanga. That is the Panchang. Five limbs. Okay. These five limbs. What are these five limbs? These are the five dimensions of astrology. These are the five parameters of astrology that decide the quality of time. Okay. The basic principle on which astrology works is it defines the quality of time. For the non-believers, all the time is the same. Whether it's the first hour of Sunday or second hour of Monday, everything, all the time is same. It doesn't have any quality attached to it. But from the astrological perspective, each and every point of time, even up to the second, even up to the second, there is a quality attached to it. Whatever is the quality at 9 a.m. is not the quality at 9.05 a.m. Okay. One of the main quality of time is the Jalatattva. That is the water element. Now, let me tell you one thing. The water element, what is the significance of water element? The Before I, I take a uh, let me take an example of the earth. Earth has 70% of water. Okay. And it is very common phenomenon. The high tide and low tides caused by the, uh, the movement of moon. By the revolution of moon around earth. That causes high tide and low tide. It's very common phenomenon. Why does it happen? This is because of gravitational pull of moon and the water that is there in the oceans. Now see yourself. Your body itself is made up of 70% water element. Now, do you have any reason to believe that the, that the plan, that the movement of moon can cause the high tide and low tide and such phenomena on the earth and you don't get affected by it? Obviously you do. And that's the reason why the water element is so important. Water element in your body represents the, the relationship, okay, the, the quality of relationship that you are going to have, okay. If you have uh, a very good quality of, uh, of water element inside you, then you, you have a very uh, very uncanny uh, way of establishing relationship and maintaining them. 
but if on any day the relationship is disturbed the water element is disturbed then you will not be able to maintain the relationship okay for example your let's say your husband uh, always puts the socks uh, on the floor let's say he all he always does that and daily you'll see and ignore but one day suddenly your mercury will be very high okay your temperature will, will get very high and you you just make the heck out of him so the the event is same but on some day you are able to control it and on some other day you are not able to control okay same in case of husband also like daily he'll be he'll be eating the same bread and butter but one fine day he'll say what the heck i'm eating the same thing daily you are not cooking anything for me so there is a point there is a point in time when that water element is affected that affliction that uh, imbalance you can detect based on the the rashi that you have based on the nakshatra that you have on certain rashi on certain nakshatra if you are born you tend to get an imbalance in the water element on certain days now before i just show you the entire map and you apply it on on a daily chart let me tell you what is the use of it what is the use of it if i tell you that tomorrow you are you are you are going to have fight with your spouse or if not spouse then your boss if not boss your colleague or somebody anybody you find on the way you are going to have fight because water element is disturbed for you for tomorrow or day after tomorrow or some other time what are you going to do since you know you have you already have this premonition so you will tend to subjugate yourself you will understand your own nature that this is the time when i get angry so you will try to control yourself and imagine if you control yourself on the days when water is in balance what will happen when the water is balanced you are even more cooler that's the purpose of this exercise to tell you in 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 advance on which day you are going to have fight with your spouse colleagues boss or any person you meet on the way okay now before that let me tell you the concept of tithi tithi is a lunar day now what is a tithi see the sun and the moon they revolve in the sky moon around the earth and the earth around the sun and sun around its own axis okay so at any point of time you have to see the angle between sun and moon okay the angle between sun and moon can be 0 degree or it can be maximum to 360 degrees okay now this whole difference between sun and moon degrees is divided into 30 30 30 kinds of relationships okay in vedic astrology sun is the parmatma and moon is the mother okay sun is the father moon is the mother and how you are born you are born out of relationship between mother and father not only the biological mother and father but also but also these astral relationship between the the father son and the mother moon now the the quantification of this relationship is based on the degrees that they, that they have okay so the overall from 0 to 360 degrees you can divide it by 30 okay and each degree of each 15 degree difference between sun and moon denotes one relationship between the mother and father okay so on the day you are born on the lunar day you are born whatever tithi has been prevailing it represents the relationship that your mother and father had on that day okay that decides the quality of water element inside you because after all you inherit the mental the physical abilities of your mother and father 
so the extent of water element is defined by is decided by the quality of relationship that your mother and father had okay so just like there is an element there is an element of panchanga that gives you the water element there is an element of panchanga that gives you the energy the fire element the vitality okay that fire element is provided by the vara lord okay that is the lord of the day now from sunday monday tuesday you see as the name they have you can easily recognize sunday is ruled by sun monday is ruled by moon tuesday by by mars wednesday by mercury thursday by jupiter uh friday by venus saturday by saturn and we can come back to sunday okay now these the the day when you are born that decides the physical vitality that you are going to have or the fire element that you have okay now there is a uh, there is a water and fire element coming together in some in some people okay these are the people that they are not able to maintain their relationships for example if somebody is born on uh, on let's say let's say ekadashi that is the 11th lunar day okay now that 11th lunar day is ruled by mars now if the same person is born on on tuesday then tuesday is also ruled by mars so mars has got dual responsibility one to provide the water element to you and one to provide the the uh, the fire element to you so there is a clash a kind of clash in your personality this is called gandanta gandanta is the water and fire knot that exist okay now here also you will see that uh, typically gandanta term is used by uh, for the for the junction between watery and fiery signs for example uh, the junction bet between vrishchik and sagittarius sagittarius is fiery and vrishchik is scorpio is watery so the point of junction between scorpio and uh, and sagittarius that uh, that is called gandanta because immediately you see just after water you are coming to the fire sign so what will happen at the junction it will, it will cause lot of disturbance likewise there are other three knots between pisces and aries and uh, and cancer and leo okay so that's a different kind of gandanta but here i'm talking about the gandanta that causes serious troubles in the relationships and what is the reason for that the reason for that is because the same element the same planet is having dual ownership one for providing the relationship and another for providing the the fire okay now that fire is actually the energy that it gives you to perform certain tasks and water is like it will cool it will cool you down okay like you tend to make relationship with people with whom you can just get along not the people with whom you have to just fight okay so there is a kind of clash in the elements on those days okay now here is the thing that you can observe in yourself in the next moment you'll see on the screen there is a chart corresponding to each rashi that you are born and the uh, the tithis that will be affected okay the way you have to read this table is like this suppose you are born on the on the uh, your moon sign is aquarius then your uh, three tithis will be affected and they are the third the 8th and 13th that is the tritya the ashtami and the trayodashi the on the days when these tithis are prevailing you will have difficulty in maintaining water element inside you what i mean is you will have difficulty in maintaining the relationship with others and most probably you is, you are going to have uh, a kind of fight with other people whom you meet okay it will cause kind of mental disturbance to you because of that imbalance caused by these days likewise you can look for the tithis corresponding to 
corresponding to the moon sign that you have okay now there there is there tends to be some confusion related to tithis in in india fortunately or unfortunately we are not able to even celebrate a single festival just because of this confusion there are some some rituals that need to be performed on the udaya tithi and there are some festivals that need to be performed according to the 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 exact tithi that is prevailing at any point of time now what is the difference the difference is at the sunrise whatever location you are in at that position whatever is the sunrise time then whatever tithi was prevailing at the sunrise time that decides the udaya tithi okay so generally even though let's say sunrise had been at 7:30 am in the morning and uh, till 7:45 am in the morning it was uh, amavasya okay then the whole day will be considered as amavasya according to udaya tithi whereas the pratipada has started from 7:45 am to the next day okay so now for this purpose you do not have to take the udaya tithi you have to take the actual prevailing tithi at that point of time okay there are panchangas on the internet there are softwares available that give you these tithis and you can exactly see uh like as soon as that tithi starts and ends you will see that kind of you will observe that imbalance inside you so what my suggestion is the only remedy that you have is your own restraint okay your mind your mind should be restrained okay so that is the only remedy that you have that you have to follow because when you already know that this is going to happen then you should not just freak out you should just control the senses and tend to just try to relax or try to forgive other people okay namaskar